or ch changing over to like uh, getting a little more kind of work done in here. Now, let me see if it's actually working right now. A little while ago, the web service was down. So let me see if it's back up any better. But the whole uh, the Green Building Studio service was having troubles. Let me see if it's actually doing any better. Because if, if it is, I'll talk to you a little bit more about energy performance. If it isn't, then we'll just dive right into uh, the cost estimating instead. Hang on. Let's see if I can do it. Create a design alternative. Oh, it looks like it's doing a little bit better now. That's good. Okay, we can actually get started with this. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is actually just open up Green Building Studio again, give you a little more guidance about using that, because we really kind of just had to rush right through it at the end last time. But let's kind of talk about really how this system works. And again, what we got started with here is, if I go back to uh, Revit architecture, yeah, we created sort of this very simple little shed roof house that was set in East St. Louis that we wanted to go ahead and take a look at. Now, in terms of what you're doing with the assignment, we're giving you the building project file already that already has the rooms in it. So there's really nothing you have to do up front in it to Revit. It's actually kind of OK and ready to export as a GBXML file and bring into Green Building Studio. So if that's your role, you don't have a lot of upfront work, unless you want to go ahead and change the windows around or something like that and kind of think about that. That would be valid, too, if you want to change the glazing around. But let me go ahead and just kind of pull up that little house again. So we created this little house. We put some rooms in it. It looked something like that. At the end of all that, we exported it. So we say export GBXML. And we get something that looks like this. And then we can choose, oh, the degree of complexity. Again, the difference right in here is simple just sort of treats, oh, large paned glaze or curtain systems as large single pieces of glass. Shading surfaces is the notion of whether or not we're going to include um, the overhangs from the roof and any light shelf that we put in there. And that's generally a good thing to do. You can increase the complexity by including uh, just multi-pane pieces or even including the mullions in there too. But I'm just going to keep it relatively simple for what was going on there. We said export, we called it a GBXML file, and then we uploaded it and ran it. So let me cancel out of there and just go back into where that came out to. After that, we went into Green Building Studio. There's a little uploading program. And all the uploading program really does is it just matches your GBXML file against a project file that's out on the web. So let me log into this. So really, this, this is a utility that doesn't do a whole lot for you besides help you upload things. It's really not much more to it. So within here, there was, oh, the East St. Louis house. And then we could browse to a GBXML file. That was something that we exported out of Revit. Okay, Choose it, and we can send it up to the project. So what did I do last time? I already have part two. Let me go ahead and do that one. I'll just open that as an example. I'll create a new run. And what it does is it sends it off to Green Building Studio. And as it runs the analysis, it does all sorts of different things. This is a very simple model, so it goes pretty quickly. But it goes through and converts all the glazing surfaces it, uh, into things where it's tr uh, it does the wall surface. It basically takes all the surfaces, figures out what the thermal transmittance properties are between all those things, does a phot photovoltaic analysis, and ultimately comes up with some sort of report that looks like this. So the report is, well, there's a lot of different pieces of it. There's energy and carbon results. Okay, That's the overall notion of really how much energy we're using, both annually as well as across the lifetime. 
The difference there is the lifetime is, or the life cycle cost is really it's 30 years discounted. At, I think it's 6%. We can look at what the assumptions are. But it's a little bit of E60 engineering economy happening in there. Um, it's telling us the annual CO2 emissions based on the fuel and the electric use, telling us the actual fuel and electric use. And somewhere in here is actually the energy use intensity. So let me see if I can find where that went to. There's the carbon footprint in terms of net CO2. That's the detail of that. I was looking for energy use intensity, and where did it go? I'm not finding it there. Let me go back to the project runs. It is reported right here. So basically, here's the initial one that we did the other day. Okay, it had an energy use intensity of 113.6. By super insulating the walls, we got it down to 102. Now, interesting things sometimes happen along here because as you go through and compare things, sometimes you get sort of odd effects. Let's go ahead and talk about that. For example, over here, if I use this as my baseline, I'll sort of compare it to that. You notice that by super insulating the walls, I actually ended up saving a lot on the fuel, a fair amount, but actually very little on the electricity. In fact, I've even seen cases where when you super insulate the walls, you actually increase the electricity use. Okay? It's a very funny dynamic you have to watch out for. <laughs> because, well, insulating the walls helps keep the heat in during the win summer wintertime. It also helps keep the heat in during the summertime. So you can go ahead and create a situation where you're actually kind of trapping more heat. And it was actually sort of nice to let it radiate out the, radi the walls. So just depending upon how the HVAC system is working, you know, what do I want to get to? Ultimately, the, 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 the in what? These, nu these numbers are subtle, and you really have to think about really what the, uh, what's driving them. So it's not enough just to kind of look at it at a really high level and kind of say that, you know, we well can say this is better, uh, but this is 11.7 less than that, absolutely. But to really understand what's going on and uh, guide your design, often you have to kind of dig in a little bit and really try to understand what the behavior is. Now, these numbers would sort of be very different, again, if we located it in a different part of the world. Because as we go moving around to different parts of the world, for example, if we do take this house to India, we have almost the exact opposite problem. There, it's almost always hotter than you want it to be. So we have the uh, issue of really just trying to keep the hot air out and kind of keep the house cool instead. So as you look at these things, there's a lot of things we can change. We can play around with the different uh, assemblies. We can s play around with different sort of assumptions for what the wall thickness and the U value should be, what the glazing should be, what the roof should be. Okay? We might also, though, decide to go back to Revit and just start changing the shading depth, changing the overhang on the roof or putting some sort of features on the windows that are going to keep the sunlight out, because that might be a more effective strategy than just changing the materials. So as an experienced designer, you really have a lot of variables to play with, and you have to kind of be you know, kind of mindful about what you're doing and kind of plan it very carefully. But let's just kind of show you the whole notion of design alternatives and how, at least working within this system, if I'm not changing the geometry, how I can kind of keep on tweaking these things, since that's really what we have in mind for you to do for this first assignment. So let me go back to uh, the base run again and start with that. So the base run, okay, which has this data for it, has certain building details and assumptions down at the bottom. And if you scroll on down, you'll actually see that it's already sort of considering there that it's an R9.58 or 9.5 8 inch concrete wall. Okay, The interior walls are considered to have no insulating value. The roof's actually pretty good already. R38 is actually you know, better than the code in terms of what we have to do in here in California. All that may be appropriate for Boston, where I think I set this. Here in the windows, we have a little bit of information here about those windows and what the U values are. Looks like they're double insulated or double glazed windows, okay, that have a certain uh, what Sh uh, shading coefficient. But there's information here about basically how things are designed right now. So if I was looking at this right now and kind of looking at things, I'm looking at the roof and thinking there may not be very much to improve on the roof because R38 is actually a pretty well insulated roof in terms of what's going on. The walls there was some room to improve on. We could also start playing around with the windows. But the idea is to really go through and for each of the different variables, tweak them a little bit and see if you sort of have much of an impact so you can figure out really which are the ones that make the biggest difference. Because ultimately, 
you really want to have something that's you know, holistically operating better, and that sort of involves the glazing, the walls, and the roof. The whole envelope has to be performing well. So if I was looking at the exterior walls, for example, and targeting that, I can go back to my project runs. I can say, these were the super insulated walls that we chose last time. I'm not sure how far they were. Let's see what we did for them. When we did super insulated walls, it was a structurally insulated panel for some of it. 12 inch structural and panel concrete forms there. Okay. Let's go ahead and try another alternative in there. So what I can do is go back to my project runs and choose this. And then we'll create a design alternative to compare to it. So how design alternatives work is you can really change any of the different variables you're seeing here. We can change the wall construction. We can change the glazing percentage or the glazing type. We can change any of those different things okay, by changing variables down here. We add it as a run and say run it, and then we get a comparison. So for example, if we wanted to change, oh, let's go on the walls. Let me call this like, uh, like non-insulated walls or lightly insulated walls. And for that, what I'm going to do is, for the walls, say that I'm going to change it to oh, like a metal frame without insulation. That would be sort of interesting as a baseline, just to sort of see how big the difference is. So what I'm doing is just choosing the different alternatives. Notice as I'm choosing the alternatives, the change is showing up in red up here. That's how you can kind of keep track of what it is that you changed in this alternative. Let's go back to Western. Okay, actually, I should make that non-insulated since that's what it actually is right now. Okay, I will add that alternative. It's kind of hanging around there waiting to be submitted right now. Let me go ahead and run the alternative. What's going to happen is when I run the alternative, it'll work in the background. And it's uh, just kind of hanging around in the run queue right now. When it finishes running, it'll actually pop in and give me a result. Okay, and let's try something which is just sort of, oh, walls which are just code compliant insulation. So let's again, we'll create another alternative in there. We'll say code compliant insulation. And for that one, I was going to choose the choice in here, which is it's code compliant. Now, for all these different choices, if you get into the help system, it'll tell you, you know, precisely what the R values are for each of these things. Or we can actually just, you know, when you go to the building details, you can sort of see what those are too. Let's pop it over to Eastern. Great, so I've created another alternative here. I'll add the alternative. And let me run the added alternative. So the idea is what we have in mind for you to do is just go through and try changing different sort of wall values and try changing different roof values. Let's try glazing. Glazing is another one that's kind of a good one to start changing around. It's kind of interesting. I can see already here. The super insulated walls were 8,200. The non insulated walls were 10,600 in terms of an annual cost. So, hmm, like $2,500 a year. That'll actually add up to be something pretty significant. It was worth putting the insulation in the walls. Code compliant insulation was 8,669, kind of in the middle somewhere. Let's try changing, oh, some glazing alternatives. Right now, the glazing, oh, let's go ahead and let's call it, say, triple glazing. So some people like to do something like that, although I don't find it generally helps out very well. I can change it to be insulated, green. Actually, the color actually does make a difference in terms of the glass. Which do I have? I don't have that super. In oh, there's super insulated, three pane, clear, low E. OK, so we'll try that. Notice I could also change the percentage. At a really high level, we can just start tweaking with the notion, is it 15% glazing, 20% glazing, 30% glazing? And the idea is just to give you some very quick feedback so that you can then go back and start changing the design. OK, so we'll say that. 
Let me switch over and get the Western, or that was the Eastern right there. Looks like I got them all. Great. Let me add that alternative. And I'll run that. Now, as we're running these alternatives, it's important to note, currently these are all diffed off the baseline. Okay, We can diff them off of another diff. Okay, we'll go back to the tree, and you can add a design alternative under an alternative to kind of keep on accumulating things. These are all just kind of going off the baseline. Okay, and let's try one other one. We'll add another alternative. I'm going to call it reflective glass. I was always surprised about this one. When you go through, and if you change the type to, instead of just being insulated, I make it reflective glass, which actually has the impact of actually reflecting a lot of the light back out. Of course, the people on the outside don't necessarily like that because, well, have you ever been to Mandalay Bay in, in uh, like Las Vegas? There's this gold reflective glass, and there's a place where you can stand out in the back patio there where it's almost like being in an oven because it's all the reflective glass actually re-radiates all the heat back out. There's like good stories about that. Uh, like the Disney Concert Hall in LA has a similar sort of problem to it. <laughs> you know, when you put curved surfaces and put a lot of sun rays hitting them, things reflect back and actually get focused and concentrate. But that's another story. Okay, reflective glass. Say add the alternative there. And I'll go ahead and run that one. Okay, so that's just sort of running right now. Another thing that we can just sort of look at in terms of changing the orientation, that's another thing we ask you to look at is, let's just go ahead and try rotating the building. That's real easy. Again, we're doing it off the baseline now, so I can rotate it, say, 30 degrees or something like that. And I never remember which way is positive and negative. So you have to kind of help me remember. Okay, we can test it. And actually, we should go to the help file and see. I had the alternative. So doing nothing but just changing the rotation of the building. Let's see what that does. Okay, I'm going to go back to all the different design alternatives so we can kind of look at that a little uh, while the project runs. That one's still in process. Let's see if we can figure it's out anything going on here. So compared to the baseline now, that's sort of our current base right now. I can even sort of zero in on it. That way everything will sort of compare to it. What can we actually see? Okay. Yeah. The non-insulated walls were a whole lot worse, about 50% worse than putting some insulation in there. So the insulation is definitely having some value. If I start looking at comparing to, say, code compliant insulation, though, let me go to that one, just kind of the base for what's required for the code. You'll see that non insulated walls are a lot worse. Super insulated walls, eh, 13 kilobTUs per square, or per square foot per year better. So somewhat better, but it's yeah, it's not huge, and you got to sort of start thinking about whether the cost of adding that insulation is worth the savings over the lifetime of the building, and all the uh, energy Im or carbon input packs it might have too. If you look at the whole issue of the glazing and compare that back to the base assumption, I think the base assumption was uh, double insulated glass. So triple glazing, it looks like it actually has well, it actually lowered it some, just a little bit, 1.6. So honestly, if I was comparing right now the choice of putting in triple glazing throughout the whole window or super insulating the walls, insulating the walls seems to be a better choice than kind of increasing the glazing on the windows. Reflective glass, what's happening over there? Actually, there it's increasing a little. So we have to start thinking about that. It's interesting. The reflective glass is lowering the electric cost quite a bit. I'd sort of expect that. We don't have nearly as much of an air conditioning load in terms of what's going on. But it's actually sort of increasing the heating load because we're sort of reflecting out the heat during the winter time, so we're not getting that. So again, this would sort of vary. I'm in Boston, Mass. right now, so my heating loads are pretty significant. If I was in some place like uh, Phoenix, Arizona, or something like that, this might be a very effective thing because we're, you know, the air conditioning loads are really dominant as opposed to the heating loads. But it's going to vary just based on where you put it. OK, doing something like rotating the building 30 degrees, and a small change, not a huge change, but it's one thing you want to consider. You know, would 15 be better? Would 45 be better? But there really is a small change that you can make. Or I could say that even 
the effect of going through and rotating the building 30 degrees was every bit as impactful as putting in triple glazing as opposed to double glazing. So given the choice in a big parking lot, I might just sort of flip the building 30 degrees and save the money and not do the insulation or not do the triple glazing. Okay, so that's, that's kind of, you know, this sort of hand wavy, a little bit adjusted. That's the level at which we want you to approach this. It's really just trying to get some high level feedback to, you know, just sort of guide our next round of design decision making. Something like that. So it's not incredibly detailed, but try to approach it systematically. And when you get all done, when you come up with what you think is the best combination of all the different things that you want to say, cost for performance, this is what I'm going to recommend, put them all together in one design alternative. Okay, and then we'll compare how your combined alternative does to the base run. And we can say overall, given all the things you're recommending with the changes in the energy performance. Okay, that sort of makes sense? Excellent. Okay, let us go ahead and let's do this because I'm about to shift gears. How about let's go ahead and do our like five minute break right now? Do it a little bit on the early side so that when we come on back, I'm going to shift gears and just start talking about cost and estimating in that part of the assignment instead. But you know, hopefully, this will sort of make sense in terms of what's going on with the energy, stuff like that. And again, we're giving you a file which already has the rooms defined in it and stuff like that. You should be able to GBXML it, send it out, and just start uh, playing around in Green Building Studio. Okay, and remember, only one of you need to really play with it, although more of you can. But you know, go ahead and you know, divide your work up appropriately. <laughs>